haven't done that in a while. What's up, y'all? Um, I recently had the opportunity to paint a motorcycle helmet for a local motorcycle show that happens every year, and it's called Garage Brood. I just so happened to have documented myself uh, in the whole process. I need to stop shaking the desk. <laughs> and I figured that I would share it with you guys because I thought it was a really cool process. I'd never done it before. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the progress that I made. This happened about a week ago now, so I just haven't had the time to sit down and do like an intro or anything or edit the footage. Um, I've just started going through the footage, uh, so yeah. Roll the clips! Like all complex projects, uh, there were quite a few hiccups that I ran into, um, especially in the beginning. The priming process was probably the easiest to accomplish, it just required me going ahead and sanding off the glaze that was already on the helmet, um, and then doing a nice uh, one or two layers of primer slash white paint since it had a gold base when I received it. The first mistake I made is I used a very simple mask in a space with zero air ventilation um, to do the first coat and uh, a bunch of junk got in my lungs so make sure when you do this you get a nice ventilator especially if you're working in a confined space and not outside. Um, the stuff that's in primer, paint primer, and like base coats are not very good for you. It's not really good in general to inhale a primer or any sort of like acrylic paint um the substances aren't good and you'll definitely feel it later because i sure did i went ahead and picked up this one from home depot um it was roughly forty dollars uh, but it came with two sets of filters that you change out uh, depending on how frequently you're using it. You have to go ahead and buy complete new filters, like this whole side piece, um, I think every six months or so, um, based on the usage again. I think uh, it did say these last about six months, and those are about $25 um, for a new set. But these top air filters right here, um, it really just depends on your usage. I think it was shorter than like two weeks. I'll go ahead and like correct myself and make sure that's proper information. But this was definitely worth it. Um, it just made the painting process a lot easier, um, especially since the space I was in was pretty confined. I wanted to also share with you guys that I ended up using Ride Force helmet customization tool to plot out a concept for what I wanted to do. The main inspiration for this helmet came from Edo period Japanese paintings. Um, I knew with the color schemes and gradients uh, that it would be something simplistic enough for my first time. I also had about a week to finish this, so I didn't want to be too over ambitious with anything I had planned to do, especially if it was symmetrical. So going with something non-symmetrical and kind of free form, I think was uh, the best option for me who had never done it before. The concept ended up being like pretty much completely the same as the result, uh, so I did use this reference pretty heavily. Uh, I changed a few things here or there. I was able to illustrate the tree much better since this program is based in like shape placement um, as opposed to actual drawing, but it does have a lot of nice uh, shapes that are pretty uh, resemblant to like brush strokes. Um, a lot of the paint splatters could be used as like uh, clouds or trees, etc, etc. So. Overall, uh, this was a really fun tool to have at my disposal. Um, I ended up taking pictures of each angle, so I had them for reference when I was actually painting. Anyways, back to the actual painting, but yeah, there is the concept.
daily perm. Um, ignore the frizz. So, my airbrush exploded on me. And, um, where I'm starting off in the time lapse is a little bit after I've made some progress on the lined area. Um, just because I got frustrated and I just wanted something to go right. Um, there's too much moisture in the air in my basement. And, um, it caused a lot of bubbling up with the paint. Um, I thought it was my airbrush, but I tried my, uh, single action airbrush and the exact same thing happened. So I came to the conclusion that the compressor is just not pumping clean enough air into the brushes. And, uh, long story short, it exploded on me again. Hi, Willow. <laughs> she wants to interrupt me talking. I kind of wanted to, like, chill out and do the part of it that I knew was going to look good because... I had more control over it, so just an explanation for that. I'll also show you what happened. Um, I'm really lucky it didn't go all over the helmet. Uh, I don't know how it didn't go all over the helmet, but it didn't. Um, right now I'm trying to figure out a solution on how to fix the top because it looks really bad. Um, so ignore that. Um, I think what's going to happen is my dad is going to help me. We're going to go back and mask it up and then just try to fix it. And then I think I'm going to airbrush white. Uh, Hopefully my airbrush doesn't explode on me again. Um, airbrush white, like what I can, um, around it and just try to fix that layer, um, and then like repaint the top. We tried sanding it a bit and it just wasn't working out. So, um, I'm just gonna ignore it for now and just work on what's fine and what looks okay. And, um, that time lapse will start here in a second. But yeah, anyways, that is a short explanation of why it's a jump in progress and I stopped uh, filming when my phone needed a charge to I was frustrated and just wanted to keep going so yeah
I'm glad I let you do it. Do what? Hey, Mask man. it. Because it's probably going to be like pristine. I spoke too soon. Nah. I'm teasing. A little bit of run right there. Ah, uh, it's alright. I'm gonna take the bottom off. Like I said, I don't want to tilt it. Set that one on top, It's gonna crush my skull, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> I've kind of been back and forth on what potential issues could have made my airbrush malfunction like it did. I went over quite a bit of there's too much moisture in the air in my basement to um, the compressor that I had wasn't powerful enough to get proper airflow and that I might have bought cheaper paints, which in the past I've never really had an issue with cheaper acrylics depending on how much you water them down. Um, but it was just a mess of issues. I cleaned my brush repetitively. Um, I think my brush is damaged from using some really heavy face uh, airbrush face paints a few years ago for a project. Um, so I think that might have something to do with it. I might need to replace the pen caps and the pen tips um, or the needles specifically. Um, but I just didn't have the money for that. So I kind of made do with what I had. I was really frustrated at this phase because I feel like I could have accomplished more because I had the skill set to do so, but I could barely spray like a smooth gradient as it was. So it was just a bit frustrating, but I just made do with what I had. There was a moisture buildup though. However, I can completely confirm that. I'm just not sure what the source was, whether it was just having like really poor quality uh, acrylic paints or a mix of the the poor quality acrylic paints alongside um, just really bad air quality in the basement. So I know the compressor was struggling the whole time. It was getting pretty hot. So I was turning it off periodically when I was done with like a color just to let it cool. But um, you know, you just make things work. <laughs> in the final analysis, I really had wished that I'd been able to put on a little bit more clear coat. I did about four layers of clear coat. Um, I used pretty much the whole can. I wanted to go definitely for that more glossier look that you see on more professional work. Uh, however, I think that it turned out pretty good for what it was for my first attempt. Uh, it, it was pretty protected, um, let it dry for 24, 30 hours. You could still kind of feel the layers of paint underneath where I had used a brush, but I think that's literally just because I'd use a brush and layered up. Um, a few more coats of clear coat might have helped that, but besides that, I think it came out relatively well. It was still shiny, just not the level of shiny I wanted it to be. Every video that I had watched too, for reference, they all had full studios. They all had those really nice, huge like uh, spray brushes that are like way less for like fine work like my airbrushes were and more so for just like full coats and everything um, and they had studio spaces but honestly like I didn't know what I was doing beforehand because the weather was pretty cold I figured I would just find a space to do it in but my dad like made a temporary studio for me so I couldn't be more thankful for that that was a really really cool thing and he totally didn't have to do that thanks for watching hope this was interesting to some degree I'm pretty satisfied for my first time um I know I can do better next time just with the experience I got from doing this it was a cool medium to try I look forward to my next opportunity to give it a shot I'll leave you with some footage from the evening take care